Imagine a group of people at the gym. They're running on treadmills, they're pedaling on stationary bikes, they're lifting weights, and even punching a heavy bag. What do they all have in common? Well, one thing for sure, they're all breathing. Breathing is essential for providing our bodies with the oxygen we need to generate energy, whether we're working out, walking, or even sleeping. Let's look more closely at how this works. At the heart of this energy production is a process called cellular respiration. We're not gonna get too deep into the specifics of cellular respiration in this video, but let's briefly look at its chemical formula. It starts with glucose, then we add six molecules of oxygen, and then we get six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water. So that's C6H12O6 plus 6O2, which gives six CO2 and six H2O. Now, this is a formula that you wanna memorize if you haven't already, because it's such a crucial formula for understanding the reactants and the products that are involved in cellular respiration. The glucose is a type of sugar that we get from the food we eat. The oxygen is what we get when we breathe in the air around us. Carbon dioxide is a waste product of cellular respiration. It leaves the bodies whenever we breathe out. And water is an essential molecule for life and is also a product of cellular respiration. We've looked at the circulatory system in many of our other videos and have seen how the heart pumps blood throughout our bodies. We've looked at how the heart receives deoxygenated blood and sends it to the lungs via the pulmonary artery. The blood picks up oxygen from the lungs and then it returns to the heart full of oxygen and is pumped to the rest of the body through the aorta. But let's look at how the respiratory system is involved in this process. When we breathe in, the air comes in through the oral and or the nasal cavities. The air then travels from these cavities through the trachea, which leads to the two bronchi. This then splits into smaller bronchioles and ultimately reaches the alveoli, which are the tiny little air sacs where the gas exchange actually happens. Now, what you'll notice is that surrounding the alveoli are these capillary beds. These capillary beds get oxygen poor blood from the pulmonary artery. As the deoxygenated blood passes by the alveoli, it picks up oxygen. But there's another important thing that's happening here. As it's picking up oxygen, it's also gonna release carbon dioxide that accumulated in the blood as a product of cellular respiration. So now we have carbon dioxide going into the air that's inside the alveoli, and the blood is now full of oxygen. And this oxygenated blood then returns to the heart via the pulmonary vein. And from there, the heart can pump the oxygenated blood back out to the rest of the body. And when you breathe out, you breathe out the carbon dioxide into the air. It's a beautiful thing. Your body now has what it needs, the oxygen, and the carbon dioxide can be used by trees and plants to make more glucose so that when you eat plants and other kinds of food, you get the glucose that you need for cellular respiration to continue. Lovely. Now there's one more thing I wanna to touch on in this overview of the respiratory system, and that's the role of the diaphragm. This is a muscle that's located right below the lungs. It separates the thoracic region above from the abdominal region below. When the diaphragm contracts, the lungs expand, and that draws air into the lungs to provide the oxygen that's needed for cellular respiration. Then when you relax the diaphragm, the abdominal contents that were compressed when you breathe in, they will push back against the diaphragm, causing air to be expelled from the lungs, sending out the carbon dioxide. And that's an overview of the respiratory system. My name is Leslie Samuel from Interactive Biology, where we're making biology fun. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.